Hi Summit Kids, Miss Heather here. Thanks for watching Kids Church at home. We're gonna play a game. It's Simon Says. Have you ever played Simon Says? If not, I say Simon Says and you do it. If I don't say Simon Says, don't do it. Ready? Stand up. Okay, Simon Says, march around. Simon Says, stop. Simon says, do jumping jacks. Simon says, stop. Simon says, pat your head. Stop. Did you stop? <laughs> if you did, well, that wasn't good because you would be out if we were in class because Simon didn't say. So do you know what it means to rebel? Rebel means to go against or oppose authority. In our game, Simon was the authority. Today we're going to learn a story about how the human race rebelled against God and His plan to bring it back to Him. But before we do, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the kids watching. I ask that you would give them a heart to want to obey. And I thank you, Lord, for your protection over them and for your promises to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. After the great flood, God told Noah and his sons to grow their families and fill the earth. As their families grew, the people started to travel through the land. At this time, everyone in the world spoke the same language. One day, the people traveled through a valley. They liked it there and they decided to stay. We don't want to be scattered all over the earth, they said. Let's build a city and a tower so big that it touches the sky. The tower will make us famous. The people made bricks out of clay and baked them in the fire to make stones. Then they used the stones to start building the tower. They wanted glory for themselves instead of God. But God is greater than anyone. God created people to give glory to him alone. God came down to look at the tower. God said, if they are doing this, they will keep thinking up more wrong things to do. So God mixed up the people's words. Instead of everyone speaking the same language, everyone spoke different languages. When people tried to make plans, they could not understand what the other people were saying. If one workman said, hand me another brick, nobody else knew what he wanted. The people had to stop building the city. Families had to move away from each other to live with people that they could understand. God made it so the people did just what he told them to do after the flood. They were scattered all over the world. The city with the unfinished tower was called Babel. People wanted glory for themselves instead of God. They ignored God's plan, so God confused their language and scattered them all over the earth. One day, Jesus will gather together all of God's people from every tribe and language, and they will worship him together. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Aubrey from Indian Trail, North Carolina asks, What did God choose to save Noah? Was Noah perfect? Oh, that's a fabulous question. You see, the scripture tells us in Psalms 115 that God can do whatever he pleases. Our God, the psalmist says, is in the heavens and he does whatever he pleases. See, our God is, is sovereign and we're even reminded of God's sovereignty in Romans chapter 9. You see, Romans chapter 9 refers to us as being as being clay and God being the potter and God forming and doing with the clay whatever he chooses. And so it was God's sovereign will that he chose Noah and saved Noah. Now to your second question, was Noah perfect? Noah was in no way perfect, Aubrey, and nor is any other other human being that ever walked the face of the earth except for Jesus Christ. He was perfect. He was without blemish. He was without sin. So it brings me joy and delight to know that Noah was imperfect and I'm imperfect and you're also imperfect and everybody listening to this response is imperfect. But God in his loving kindness sent his son Jesus Christ to, to save us from our sins. You know, 
How do you feel knowing that God saves us even though we have sinned? More than 70 years ago, a group of men and women left the comforts of their own homes to make a new home in the Amazon jungle of South America. Jim and Elizabeth Elliot were among this group. Their plans? To reach the unreached Warani tribe and to take the gospel to them. Jim was killed by members of this tribe before he ever saw the gospel take root. But that was not the end of God's work to reach the Warani with his love. Through the continued work of Elizabeth Elliot, many in the tribe learned about God and his son. Today, many Warani know and follow Jesus Christ. God's work in the jungle continues today too. Missionaries are still going to the hard to reach places. The area is massive, and so to get from where I live, which is already a jungle city, I have to get into a land plane and fly to another port city, and then the next day we'd get in a boat, and in this slow boat we travel sometimes three days to get to where we're going. Because we're going into areas where the gospel's not, sometimes it just takes time. But recently we have noticed just God opening some doors. Missionaries are training people from different jungle tribes they are teaching them Bible stories and showing them how to share God's stories with others from their tribes and other villages. You see families coming to Christ. You do see village headmans getting permission to come in. It really confirms everything that we're out there to do, to go out and make disciples of all nations. When we have those things happen, we sit back and go, okay, this is what it's all about. They can go and they can teach others, and those people can teach others. I want to see this momentum like a wave through the jungle where I can say, look, I didn't see it happen, I wasn't there, but I know the gospel has reached these dark corners. It's announcement time and I'm so excited that we're having another Spirit Month. Well, this next week is Inside Out Day. So guess what? You get to come to church wearing your clothes inside out. Have you ever done that before? I haven't and I'm kind of excited to do that. So we're also at the end of the month, which is Halloween, we are going to have a carnival at church. That's gonna be so much fun. We'll have cotton candy and popcorn and carnival games, raffle prizes, and guess what? You get to come to church in your Halloween costume, all dressed up. I can't wait to see what you're gonna be. And I can't wait to dress up myself. So I hope you can come. So our time together is over. I hope you've had an awesome week, kiddos. Bye.